In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss perfect competition. This is the first video in a series of three videos. The second video has numbers and calculations, and the last video, video number three, deals with calculus. Again, this is the first video, and I introduce the topics of perfect competition. An assumption we make in perfect competition, there's lots of buyers and lots of sellers. Think something like eBay. There's a lot of market knowledge, which might be a stretch. For every buyer that disappears, a new one appears. Same with sellers. Easy entrance and exit to the market. Also, very important, what we also assume if we draw in the individual demand curve, and also I'll draw in the market demand, the market demand curve. Be a group of yellow, there he is. Changes in individual demand have no impact on market demand, or very, very small, minor, minor impact on market demand. Now I'll make the same assumption about market supply. Here's individual supply, one supplier and a market supply. Changes in individual supply have no impact on market supply. Now, if I draw on market supply and market demand, price, the purple there, and that's our market quantity, price is fixed. In other words, suppliers and buyers see price as fixed and they're price takers. I'm going to put quantity on the x-axis and cost per unit on the y-axis. And price is fixed for an individual supplier. That's what this is. And the marginal revenue and price and demand are all the same thing. That's the marginal cost curve, the average total cost curve, and finally the average variable cost curve. A supplier will produce a quantity where right there at that point where marginal cost, MC, is equal to marginal revenue, or MR. That's where profits are maximized. Now the cost for the individual supplier, I'll draw a green line up to the average total cost curve and then across, and this is our cost per unit. Total revenue is this rectangle here, the purple rectangle, and it's simply price times quantity. That's the area. I can also do the same thing for cost. Total cost is cost times quantity, or the area of the green rectangle. Total revenue minus total cost is equal to economic profit. And economic profit includes opportunity costs. So visually, I can take this purple which is total revenue, and the green, which is total cost, and the dark purple area is actually profits now. And I'll make that gray, see it a little easier, profits. The width of that rectangle is Q, or quantity. And the height is simply price minus cost. So profit, so it turns out quantity times price minus cost, in parentheses, is equal to profits, or the area of that gray rectangle. Now really, the supplier can supply at a different quantity, for example here, but at this point, cost is equal to price. So economic profits are zero here at that point in time. If the uh, supplier decides to produce at this level of quantity, cost is there, price is still there. So I'll draw that green over there. So cost, that's the cost level right there. And the gray area is profit. And the supplier can increase his profit by increasing quantity. So at this point in time, I'll move those over 
you'll see that cost goes down even a little bit further. And so the new profit is that large gray rectangle. Let me draw that back in like that. But in economics, we say profit is maximized where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, or this point right here. So we'll gain additional revenue by increasing quantity. And I'll delete a little bit of that gray so it's right there. Okay. So that's total profits. So it turns out profit is maximized while marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. Profit is maximized. This is a very important concept. Marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Profits are maximized at this point. I'll draw everything back in. Now imagine, since there's a lot of profit, people enter the market. Suppliers, more suppliers in the market, and they force the price down. The market price down. So profits are reduced. But marginal cost still equals marginal revenue. So the individual supplier also has to lower his price or her price. So now additional suppliers enter the market because some money can still be made. Pushing price down even further until cost is equal to price. And the individual supplier reduces quantity. With this new quantity, we draw that back in. That quantity there, price is the purple line. Price. And also cost is the green line there, and cost and price are the same. Economic profits equal zero. More suppliers may actually enter the market as well at this point in time. They didn't get the memo, the prices are falling. So now we have a new quantity, and we have a cost now, right there, that green line right there, a cost which is above price. So there's a loss, an economic loss actually, I should say. Let me draw the average variable cost curve back in. Prices can fall to that level right there, and we call this the shutdown point. Any price below here and the firm's shut down. So right here we have a quantity of Q, and let me put the cost in as well. It's that green line right there, or cost. So at this point in time, there's a large economic loss. There's still firms in the market. There's still people willing to supply as long as they cover their day-to-day -day costs, cover their opportunity costs, and covering average variable cost at this point in time. It turns out that that part of the marginal cost curve is the supply curve for the individual supplier in this case. So up next is the same type of example, except I'll use numbers and this will help you understand the concept even better.